Good evening. I'm Dr. Emmanuel Ochola from Northern Uganda, and I have a question for you. Are you doing enough for the health of the child? Here in Toronto, you have the Sick Kids Hospital. I'm told it's one of the best, and you're sure your child will get the best health care. That through a tax, a government-based tax system, you do not have to pay for health services anymore. And you are assured of the best doctors, the best uh, equipment, and the best drugs. I wish I could say the same for my country, Uganda. And as you know, the budget is significantly funded uh, from donations because of poverty. And a lot of times, patients have to contribute something for their health. Now, I want to tell you my story. When I was 10 years old, one time I was beaten up by a classmate. And the reason was that I was doing better. I was performing better in class. So I was taken to hospital. And this hospital is called Lachor, Lachor Hospital. It's in northern Uganda. I was treated very well. And from this simple experience, I learned some lessons. One is that all children will at one point or another be in need of health care support, no matter where they come from. Another lesson I learned, for me, uh, like you have Sick Kids Hospital here. At that time, Lacho Hospital was there for me. I had an assurance of being well. Unfortunately, the feeling of assurance is not consistently available in many settings in Africa. The feeling that I will get health. And so a simple illness poses a big threat to the life of the child in our setting. Again, when I was young, the same year actually, our priest, our Catholic priest, told us the story of a doctor who had left a very rich country, given up all her life to serve patients in our region in northern Uganda. And uh, she, he told us that this doctor, while serving and in the line of duty, she had contracted HIV. And this really caught me and, and inspired me. I thought it was something very noble to work for others, to offer your life for others. And I was inspired to become a doctor. So let's fast forward. Um, I am now a doctor. I have worked in uh, Lacho Hospital for 11 years. Now this happens to be the very same hospital which treated me as a child. And I also later learned that this doctor who inspired me uh, I didn't know who it was, was the founder, the co-founder of our hospital. She is Lucille Tisdale, and she's Canadian, a recipient of the Order of Canada, together with her husband, Dr. Piero Corti from Italy. This hospital is 57 years old now, and our mission is to provide health care to the needy, to fight diseases and poverty. And my story and that of the hospital go through very similar paths. We all went through a period, a nasty period of war, the Lord's Resistance Army. Some of you may, may have heard of it. I was displaced. My family had to relocate within the same district. And for the hospital, they had to receive so many people. We call them night commuters. Every evening, up to 10,000 would flock the hospital to go and sleep in a place that is safe. There was a lot of maiming, a lot of abductions, a lot of killings. I lost relatives to the war. Relatives were abducted for my case. For the hospital, even staff were abducted. Doctors um, were, were abducted and taken to the bush. And we had to treat a lot of wartime injuries, landmines, blast injuries, burns, cut lips and ears, and things like this. Our story, we went 
the region. As a region, we went through the epidemic of Ebola, and our hospital lost our then medical director, Dr. Matthew Lukia. So I want to ask myself then, am I doing enough for the health of the child? In our hospital, we see a lot, a lot of patients. uh, 250,000 patient contacts in one year, and uh, 35,000 of these require admission. But one thing is painful. Our patients, our children suffer from largely preventable conditions. And these simple conditions do kill them. Many times they can't afford malaria. Now we have had a big rebound, a five to ten fold increment in the last two years of malaria. Pneumonia, diarrheal diseases, I guess these are not really hard of fear. Neonatal conditions. It is painful that these are killing our children. They are largely preventable. And as a doctor, I feel great joy in helping a child regain their health, regain their smile. But very many times, I am also challenged, and I feel very sad that I have not done my best. I have not communicated well to the patient. Many times I have stopped short of what I could do because of limitations in equipment, limitations in diagnostics, limitations in uh, therapeutic options, limitations in follow-up options. Two weeks ago we had a meeting and uh, our radiology department said, I think we're in the 1950s if we talk about radiology for patient care. And the challenge has become broader if we, we, take, we leave our hospital and go to the broader health systems. Significant lack of staffing, so sometimes patients cannot be finished because there are too many. Significant lack of drugs in many, many hospitals. Lack of facilities. You cannot do what you would like to do. However, as a doctor, yes, I'm treating the patients. Yes, I'm providing the health information for prevention. There are many times that I've had to pick money from my pocket and give it so that the patient can eat or the patient can get this medicine. As a doctor, I have had to take leadership to organize the health of the child, of, of, for the health care provision. And we have many initiatives to improve the quality of care within our means there locally. I have even walked along the streets of our town asking people to contribute for the health of the child. And I take every opportunity to cry out for the voice for the health of the child. Now I want to, leave you, to give you a quote that I like. It says, no one is too poor to give and no one is too rich to receive. I'm told that being poor or being rich was a key determinant in yesterday's elections. But I want to leave the definition of poor or rich to you. And I want to give you the scenario of two people, one poor and one rich person, whose child or whose children are sick. I bet they will both be as desperate, rich or poor. We need something at some point. And these children are our children. They're not labeled by their parents' status. The children of the world are ours. They need us. They are our joy. They are our tomorrow. They are our leaders tomorrow. But they, they are vulnerable. Our children are vulnerable and they need the support of us the support of us all, regardless of our status. So if I ask the same question again, are we, are we doing enough for the health of the children? I guess I want to say I think we can do more for the health of the children. Thank you very much.